Okay, welcome back to this second uh, session with regard to um, prophetic ministry. Let's uh, take some questions or comments about prophetic song, and then we can proceed to studying about activating the gift of prophecy. So, yeah, please feel free. Anything based on what we have heard so far. Yes, Divya. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, I just wanted to know the difference between uh, a prophetic song and like a ordinary worship song. What exactly is the difference? OK. Uh, so a prophetic song, see, the difference, I would say, is dependent on the person who is leading. So if somebody just picks songs uh, because it's a good fit for, you know, it, it's just a good song. And then they go about leading in worship. Uh, that is not prophetic. But even ordinary songs, if one prayerfully, sensitively picks it, they're kind of prophetic only because the, the order in which they are arranged and, and the way it is led. It is the way God wants it. Okay, so so I think it's it's more about the person who's leading than about the song itself. So even an ordinary song can be prophetic if one has been sensitive to it. Now, if, if we we are calling it ordinary in the uh, event of it being picked just like that, hey, it's a good song. Let's sing it. So then it is ordinary. Sure, that, sure, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, Divya. So that that's yeah. Tell me. Yeah, I, I was also just looking at some of uh, the verses, like uh, in the Bible, where um, mostly it happens with. Uh, uh, maybe there are other uh, examples as well, but uh, like David or uh, even Paul, uh, like in the process of writing, uh, they uh, this. The verse, uh, you know, they they break out into a worship right away, like in in the in the scripture itself. Uh, it's very beautiful to see. I was trying to, um, yeah. I think in First Timothy, uh, First Timothy, we learned uh, 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 as we were learning, uh, in in that uh, chapter one, verse seventeen, um, uh, it says, like now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible. The only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, so it just goes on like that. It's very beautiful. So it is not, uh, it's, uh, I can't say it's a song, but it's very beautiful to see how the author just uh, in the process of writing the verse just breaks out into worship. It happens with um, uh, even David as well. I've seen like uh, he might be, you know, it, it might be a narrative uh, or a narration that uh, he's doing or even a you know conversation that uh, is to uh, he's um, engaged in but suddenly he'll break out in worship uh, so that's very beautiful to see um, so that is that a is that a song or is that uh, it's just the you know i just want to know like um, even that can be considered a song like some prayers they pray for example in second samuel chapter 7 like david is asking like how uh, uh, how is that god that you brought me this far like he is just in his prayer he is just conversing with god uh, expressing his gratitude and so many emotions in that in that sections uh, yeah so we have a, actually we have a song in our language uh, that that has the exact same you know uh, words like uh, what am I that you brought me this far? My family that you brought me this far. So yeah, yeah. Just wanted to just um, also add add that uh, best. Yes, thank you, Divya. So uh, in what you're saying, uh, even when a worship leader picks a set of songs prayerfully, now common understanding. 
you know of all of us is prophetic song in that scenario is when something is spontaneous isn't it that, that's what you're pointing to isn't it so something that is new that has never been yeah yeah that's before. right yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So uh, usually we use the word uh, words prophetic song for spontaneous songs. Okay, so you're right. You're right. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, sure, Divya. And that's what I'm saying. We should look for that. We should look for uh, spontaneity uh, as far as you know uh, our worship sessions are concerned. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Um, any other comments, thoughts? OK, so if not, we will proceed. Um, and I really pray that uh, those of you who are ministering in this area, that uh, this uh, what we have discussed will be a great blessing to you. All right, so coming to uh, chapter eight here, which is about activating the gifts of the, uh, activating the gift of prophecy. Uh, we will discuss some basic things which are important for us to flow uh, with this gift of prophecy. We know that spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. To all believers, we read about this in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verses one through eleven, and uh, there we have the list of these spiritual gifts. At least uh, there are nine of them. One which is listed is prophecy and i have shared earlier that when we talk about prophetic ministry there are a couple of gifts that we can put in that category of the prophetic ministry such as prophecy discerning of spirits word of wisdom word of knowledge so these are all uh, you know the uh, gifts from in which we have to really receive from god hear from uh, god so what are some basics when we talk about the gifts of the spirit? One is that all believers, or let's put it this way, every believer can manifest all the nine gifts of the spirit. In some Christian circles, there is an understanding where uh, people think that for a believer, God only allocates uh, you know, a set of gifts, you know, maybe two gifts, three gifts, uh, depending on uh, how our walk with him is. So that is the understanding that many circles carry. But when you look at scripture, what it says is that actually every believer can manifest all the nine gifts of the spirit. Because one thing is that these gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. They don't belong to us, wherein God says, okay, uh, uh, you know, Peter, you take tongues, uh, Mary, you take prophecy. So he doesn't allocate it that way and then, you know, assign it to that individual. But who do these gifts belong to? They belong to the Holy Spirit. So all nine gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, they all belong to the Holy Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit who is giving us these gifts. So the manifestation, in other words, you know, we read uh, in the passage that I just referred to, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 11, you know, we read there that these gifts are the manifestation of the Spirit. Okay, uh, Or in other words, we can, we can understand this as he expresses himself in a real way. Okay through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And every believer can be a channel of the expression of the Holy Spirit through the gifts. So going ahead, you know, why are we saying that all believers can flow in the nine gifts of the Spirit? So when you look at the end of that passage, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, there Paul writes, earnestly desire the best gifts. 
okay and then we move on to the passage about love and how love is so important so when paul is writing to all the believers and you know he's asking them to desire now we'll see later on that expectation is one of the important things uh, as far as the flow in the gifts of the spirit is concerned so he saying desire earnestly desire and notice he doesn't say a gift he says the best gifts so why would god tell us to desire unless he be willing to give us the gifts and he's also saying the best gifts now how do you uh, grade the gifts and decide which one is better than the other so how can we understand this it's not like nowhere else do you see uh, you know some implication that a certain gift is more you know a believer who can prophesy he is a better believer than uh, a believer who can you know uh, move in miracles or healings we don't see you know such a, such a, an implication but what we do recognize here is when paul says earnestly desire the best gift he means the operation of the right gift at the right time for example if somebody is discouraged the best gift in that moment would be prophecy because we might tell them a word of uh, you know word about their future or a word of encouragement this is what god is saying and then it just lifts them up when somebody is sick then we we say okay holy spirit i desire the gifts of healings okay let it happen or the gifts of miracles we may ask for these things so that when it manifests the person actually receives from it when a person is in a complex situation does not know what to do what should i do should i do this should i do that that the best gift would be the operation of uh, the word of wisdom remember we said that god reveals a solution uh, or a way forward through the word of wisdom so we can desire that so when we say best gift it simply means what is applicable and what is helpful in a particular situation uh, okay so we were told by paul or the believers corinthians he said earnestly desire the best gifts so then all believers can desire the best gifts why are we saying all believers because later on in that in continuation of the passage see we have, we uh, 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 when paul wrote it he did not put uh, first corinthians 12 13 all the numbering happened later so he just wrote a letter no continuously so when he wrote the letter in continuity to that we go on to first uh, corinthians chapter 13 over there he talks about love you know how we must love uh, the love of god is like this love is kind love is patient love is uh, you know long suffering it does not boast so who is he saying all this to is he saying this only to the leaders of the church no he's telling it to all the believers and so when he wrote earnestly desire the best gifts he suddenly not shifting audience he is talking to all the believers so all believers you earnestly desire the best gifts uh, but i will show you a better way let's talk about love so he talks about the importance of flowing in these gifts you know through love and then you know he uh, would come back again to first corinthians 14 where he would instruct the uh, believers to flow in a correct way in the gifts and again you know he will say when you have uh, uh, if if anyone has a prophecy then you do it one by one so he is telling all the believers it's possible for all of you to prophesy okay uh, but you do it in order in an orderly manner so what we are saying is see we understand that all in what he was talking uh, he was quite clear that all believers were able to prophesy and so also flow in all the gifts of the 
spirit. Uh, and you know, we we uh, uh, recognize that the gift of tongues is a is a gift that edifies the person themselves in first. Corinthians 14 and verse 4 and 5, uh, he says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church or building up. So when I'm alone, what is the best gift when I'm alone? I don't, I don't need to be, you know, sharing a word with someone. So I want to build myself up. So tongues is very good. So I can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. And you know, that helps me a lot. It builds me up, builds my spiritual person. But when it comes to, uh, 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 you know, prophecy, when we are with the church, when we are with other brothers and sisters, prophecy is a better one. So in that manner, you know, uh, these gifts can be used as applicable. Now, sometimes, you know, people use the passage of 1 Corinthians 13 because Paul said, okay, let me show you a more excellent way. So is he saying that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not uh, the the best let's not have uh, let's not flow in the gifts is that what he's saying actually no he he talks about love and he comes back again to gifts of the spirit so we must understand the intention of paul what he was saying is he's saying let's operate in the gifts gifts are made available by the holy spirit all can flow in the gifts uh, you can choose the best gift for the moment but here's the key. Let it be done in love. Let it be undergirded in love. That's the way in which his writing is flowing. And we must understand that. Okay. Uh, so he's not saying one or the other. Love or gifts. Pick one or this. Because sometimes you know people end up interpreting it that way. But that's not what he was saying. Because again, he comes back in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. He says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Who is he talking to? Is he talking to all believers? We said yes. He's talking to all believers uh, about the gifts. Then he's talking to all believers about love. Now in continuation in his writing, in one line he's saying, pursue love. How, to whom is it applicable? All believers desire spiritual gifts. Now, how can we say that he's telling only some to desire, only the leaders, the pastors, the fivefold ministry gifts will operate only for you? So you guys desire, or you know, those who are so-called uh, appointed, you des no, he's telling everybody because everybody can flow. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts in one breath, one line in his letter. So that means all can desire. And when God says us to desire, that means he will give us. Remember that uh, uh, scripture in Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You know, Seek me uh, and you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart. So God doesn't say seek hard because I'm not going to be found by you. I'm going to play hide and seek. Okay, You'll never find me. That's why I'm telling you to seek. It'll be fun. He doesn't do that. But when he says, you go after this, what a great God. He says, seek me and you will find me. And when he says, desire spiritual gifts, that means he is going to give it to us. He will not withhold it from us. That we must understand. That's why desire is so uh, uh, you know, beautiful uh, to, to recognize. When we have the desire, God can cause it to flow into our our uh, uh, you know our lives. So that's what God means, you know, through Paul's writings. He's saying you desire because I want to give it to you. So all of you pursue love, all of you desire spiritual gifts. God will give it to you. Uh, and again, you know, he goes on to say, but especially that you may prophesy. So we'll focus on prophecy. Now this again should not be interpreted. People say, don't speak in tongues. Because Paul is saying you must prophesy. No, let's understand it in its context. When we read 1 Corinthians 14, you know, you can look at that passage as a, like, you know, rules, housekeeping. We say, okay, when people come for a conference, we say, okay, please switch off your mobile phones. Uh, the, uh, the doors on the right uh, will lead you to the restrooms. Uh, tea will be served. So house, order. This is how we're going to do this. Okay, so in that context, he's laying 
a set of rules in first corinthians 14 not to say that prophecy is best tongues is not good enough no he's saying when we prophesy it's let's do it like this prophecy is helpful in a group setting when you're alone go ahead and speak in tongues because that that is most applicable then in a group setting prophecy is helpful and then you know he will uh, share a lot of other things uh, regarding how to practice that gift of prophecy okay so we must not understand these things in a different way uh, I, I already pointed out some of the concepts that people have that you know love or gifts that that isn't correct uh, uh, prophecy or tongues that is not correct so look at it in its context uh, moving forward sometimes you know first corinthians 12 8 that pa passage also uh, comes across like you know because there paul writes he says uh, for to one is given remember in, in that passage we saw that for to one is given uh, uh, and also verse 11 there he says but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills now in the light of what we have learned he's telling all of us to desire the best gifts right so then what is this the uh, spirit distributes to each one individually as he wills so then what about our will and desire the way we must understand this is because we already know that you know when we we are desiring that has to do with our will so god is not overriding our will but what he's doing is he according to his wisdom releases the right gifts for the moment okay so maybe we are praying for someone and the right gift that must be operated is healings in that moment so the holy spirit will release those gifts and how do we cause those gifts to be activated and flow one key we've already seen you desire the best gifts we might say something like god this person needs healings i'm going to pray for them let the word work in their life but let the spirit also work let the gifts of the spirit be made manifest so that is how the spirit wills must be understood it's not like god is saying okay i will decide i will not give you a certain gift or uh, you know a certain uh, prophetic word that's not the point all right so uh, i've already stated that you know later on in that passage of first corinthians 14 where uh, verse 23 uh, paul will say therefore if the whole church comes together in one place and then he goes on okay uh, how is it then brethren whenever you come together each one of you has a psalm has a teaching has a tongue has a revelation has an interpretation let all things be done for edification so what is he saying see everyone is carrying a word from god right a psalm a teaching a tongue a revelation so it's possible for all of us to flow in the gifts of the spirit uh, by desiring the right gifts we can cause the flow of the uh, gifts of the spirit in a better way all right so let's move ahead we we'll look at some more basics uh, and if you have any questions just uh, jump right in otherwise we will take it up once all the basics are completed okay uh, then the next thing is spiritual gifts need to be stirred up this is applicable to the gifts of the holy spirit but we also said, remember, we said that uh, we have the grace gift of God, fivefold ministry uh, uh, is a gift. So whatever gift is given to us, we must put it to use. So what is uh, uh, Paul saying in this case? First Timothy 4 verse 14, you know, he, he makes a statement to Timothy. He says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. It can be any gift okay all the categories i mentioned which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the elders so there was a certain manner in which those gifts were activated in this case through prophecy laying on of hands these gifts got activated but what is the responsibility of the individual do not neglect in other words put it into action so the greek word neglect amelio uh, is to be careless 
to make light of or be negligent okay have no regard for the gift that god has given but the actual thing that we must do is start to use the gift so when we use the gift what happens we recognize you know that it will be helpful so in second timothy 1:6 again paul told timothy he said i remind you to stir up the gift so instead of neglect what should one do stir up the gift stir up the gift is simply to put it to use and uh, you know uh, utilize it this is applicable for spiritual gifts so the more we flow in it the more you would find that it's getting uh, the flow is better um, you know people are being ministered to we are feeling more confident in functioning in that in that gift so basically it's like you know if you have a wonderful uh, instrument let's say a mobile phone and you just pack it up in in its uh, box keep it in the cupboard and say hey it's so beautiful i got a gift i got a gift it doesn't serve its purpose so even the gifts of the spirit if let's say once or twice something was activated you were prophesying and then you just forgot you are not using it anymore you are not desiring it anymore what will happen it will gather dust instead paul said stir up so every time i need to desire oh let the gifts flow let me be able to prophesy lord stir it up yeah, you know stir it up in in yourself and one of the ways we will talk about it later uh, practical ways to stir up is to even speak in tongues sometimes when we speak in tongues the gifts sort of flow better okay so that's another practical thing that we can do so stir up the gifts don't neglect them then gifts can be activated and imparted remember when we talked in the earlier uh, sessions about prophetic in the old testament uh, there was this reference to school of prophets because it's not that the gift comes from man gift cannot come from man you know in john 3 that is that statement we cannot receive unless you know it comes from heaven to to us so unless god gives it to us gifts originate from god however impartation we talked so much about it impartation can happen uh, through people uh, or you know like a channel they they are being used uh, and they can be activated so origin is from god but development and nurture man can play some part in it uh, and and we already studied a lot about it so remember even now when we said that uh, 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 paul said stir up the gift which is in you which was uh, given by prophecy and the laying on of what is that impartation okay so that is the reason we we have uh, we commission people by laying on of hands or we encourage uh, we encourage uh, coming together studying about prophecy studying about you know uh, learning more about the prophetic gift because what's happening a transfer impartation these are all words that we use or even activate uh, activation of the gift is happening uh, so you know it can be uh, taught to believers believers can be trained uh, in releasing the gifts of the spirit and uh, they can be helped you know to develop mature or perfect uh, the gifts with then so, such that they flow especially in prophecy with greater accuracy uh, greater effectiveness so that is a possibility now gifts are released through faith when we lack faith the gift will not work paul said uh, in romans 12 verse 6 having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prop- prophesy in proportion to our faith okay so then what can we uh, glean from it the lessons from this based on my faith the capacity to prophesy or the flow of the prophecy whichever terminology you use <laughs> no it will be sort of uh, uh, in line with that so let's say uh, by all this teaching now i have developed some faith i have understanding of scripture and i have faith so 
I would see that, hey, actually it's flowing. I'm able to prophesy because faith has been built up. Now, if I, if we continue to build faith, okay, regarding these matters, as faith is increasing, our uh, flow, accuracy, effectiveness of the gift will also increase. So in proportion to our faith. So when I increase my faith, I can have increased manifestation of the gift of the spirit. So that's how uh, we would we would understand this and be able to apply this. Uh, all right. Yeah, so one more passage of scripture that is helpful is Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 2 and 5, where Paul makes some statements. He says, uh, uh, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of or by the hearing of faith? See, what is he saying? He's making a contrast. The gifts are not or the works of the spirit are not uh, flowing through the works of the law, meaning I can't, I cannot manufacture, I cannot make it happen in my flesh. But in contrast, by the hearing of faith, so he's giving a key right there. He's saying, how did they get activated? How are they flowing? Faith, right? Because of faith. So I need to work on my faith, okay? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the more, uh, let's say, we study these passages more and read, uh, you know, maybe even this APC publication over and over and over again. What are we actually intending to do? As I read the scriptures, let my faith rise up regarding the gift of prophecy. So in proportion to my faith, my faith increases, my uh, ministering in this gift will also improve so that is what again you know he makes that same statement uh, uh, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith in verse 5 of galatians 3 he says that contrast works of the law is works of the flesh uh, or by the hearing of faith so faith is the key to helping us flow in prophecy okay so you are you are all doing good or is it confusing or, uh, yeah, just want to know. Any thoughts or questions at this point? Okay, all good. Great, wonderful. Let's, let's continue then. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, some more basics about prophecy. What is it? First Corinthians 14 and verse 3. Okay. He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. You know, we've understood the dimensions, right, of prophecy. These are the basic, basic uh, uh, things that happen when one prophesies. But in addition to that, we said, you know, uh, there can be elements of direction, correction, and warning. But these are operational at a greater degree and level in the you know uh, the office of the prophet not to say that they are not operational in the simple gift or the uh, the ministry gift but then they are mostly uh, operational in the office of a prophet uh, and all can prophesy okay so many things have been talked about that earlier we, I won't get into that. Then the next uh, uh, important thing to understand is when you talk about prophecy, you know, uh, be, because of our exposure of uh, Christian circles, we have this feeling, you know, sometimes when prophets call people out and they say so many things about them, you know, uh, the Lord chose you when you were in your mother's womb and uh, uh, you know, at that time, this was going on in your family. So they share a lot of details about a person. So when we hear these things, somewhere we develop this notion that a prophet knows everything about a person. See how he he told everything about that person. But not really, isn't it? Uh, when we look at scripture, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 9, it says, For we know in part... And we prophesy in 
part. So what he is saying is, prophecy is not omniscience, where who has that attribute? It's only God. God knows everything. Do I know everything? Can I know everything? No. And it's not required also. So God reveals only what is required. And that is prophesy in part. So uh, we may expect a prophet to tell us everything. Tell me everything about my life. You know, the past, the present. You know, sorry, a prophet also cannot do it. Because he can only reveal what God is showing him. Because he can, we can all prophesy only in part. Uh, and sometimes, you know, this happens when you go and ask the prophet, uh, hey, you remember 20 years ago, you said all these things about me. And they'd be like, really? Oh, oh OK, I don't remember. Because it's not so much from uh, the mind of the prophet, but the spirit is leading in that way. So uh, parts of what they are receiving, they are releasing. So we must remember that. Uh, we may not uh, have everything spoken. God may say a word, God may say a sentence, or you know something little, but that's also important. Uh, and we must not neglect that. <clears throat> that all prophecy must be judged. Very important. You know, sometimes we have this notion that uh, because someone said, "Thus says the Lord," oh, it's final. You know, it's uh, 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 sort of edge. It, it, it's set in stone. It cannot be changed. It cannot be. Uh, you know, you cannot judge that. You cannot question it. That's not true. Because in First Corinthians fourteen, when he laid down the house rules for the practice of the operation of gifts of the spirit, Paul did say in First Corinthians fourteen and verse twenty nine, "Let two or three prophets speak." And let the others judge. Wow. How can you say, Paul, how can you say, judge the prophecy? We'll see later on that the gift is pure, but the vessel or the person who is bringing in the interpretation sometimes could be an error, which is why Paul is saying, not as a putting down statement, but more as a caution as an encouragement to accuracy he's saying let two or three prophets uh, let them let them also uh, see and give their word there you know with regard to the interpretation or the release of the prophetic word and it should be okay so it's scriptural nothing wrong with it now first thessalonians 5 verses 19 uh, through 21 the last part there it says uh, okay let me read the whole thing do not quench the spirit do not despise prophecies test all things hold fast to what is good so even he uh, even there he's saying test all things prophecies can be tested so how do we apply this Basically, if somebody says something, it's okay to uh, ask the question, is this from God? Is it God speaking to me? And uh, uh, can I get a confirmation on this? It's okay to think that way. There's nothing wrong. Okay, uh, and that's what testing means, uh, or in the case of you know having other believers listen in or prophets listen in to what is being spoken, they can give their opinion and say, hey, you know this part that you shared, maybe this is what it means, and it's not necessarily that. Or uh, so we can give others can give their inputs, okay, just for the sake of accuracy, for the sake of confirmation. And so uh, to say that uh, if somebody has prophesied, it cannot be judged. Thus says the Lord, finished, period. That is not necessarily a biblical way of looking at it. But yeah, once it is confirmed and you're sure that, yes, we know, thus says the Lord. And so we stand on that word the way Abraham did and believe it through. 
okay uh, how and when can we deliver the message in uh, messages in our control so that again means you know when it comes to speaking in tongues or prophesying uh, we have this idea that uh, god is the one he is pouring out his spirit and he's shaking people up like you have absolutely no control your mouth has no control you just go you take off in tongues and you take off in prophecy and you know there's that uh, sense of chaos and disorder but that's not true uh, because in the in the you know the guidelines which uh, paul gave he said in first corinthians 14 verse 32 and 33 the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints so the spirit of the prophet is sub to the prophet or basically he's saying we can uh, utilize self-control so let's say i want to speak in tongues i can speak when i want to i can stop when i want to yes there may be some times when i just feel the nudge of the spirit where i let it flow you know that is understandable uh, but mostly uh, it's something that can operate through the will of the believer okay god doesn't override our will and you know make us do it that doesn't happen now even prophecy the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet so i get a prophetic word how do i want to say it when do i want to say it to whom do i want to say it i can operate with my own will god is not going to you know like it's coming and you have to just really it just comes out you can't help it it doesn't work like that we can uh, exercise self-control apply our will make decisions okay uh, and uh, uh, proverbs 25 verse 11 beautiful uh, scripture there it says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver so i got a word from god presentation will come to it later that depends on us and uh, hopefully when it is done correctly that word becomes a blessing to the people then other basics whenever we talk about uh, gifts of the spirit i told us don't get too technical you know oh, this is this is that when we begin to pray many times the gifts flow in packages so you know i i am um, beginning with prophecy but i'm you know moving on to uh, the operation of healings miracles and coming back to word of wisdom so anything can happen usually you know these gifts flow together and we should just let the holy spirit do what he's doing uh, and you know a couple of other things because we said that prophecy must be judged uh, we must use the phrase thus says the lord sparingly we are not saying don't use it because sometimes god may want to get somebody's attention and at that time you may feel that strong urge to actually put it this way thus says the lord or god is saying there's no harm in doing that but that that should be very limited it is best to submit what we are hearing to the people for their judgment okay uh, or, or the judgment of the congregation or the judgment of the leadership so uh, what we could what, the way we could present a prophecy is instead of saying every time we hear from god saying thus says the lord this that and everything else we would say i sense i feel so what are we doing you know, or I want to submit this to you. I, uh, it, it, it came to me and I, I'm just submitting this to you. So then what happens? It gives the other person a sense that, okay, I have an option now. And that option is I can evaluate what has been spoken, judge it in other words, uh, look for a confirmation and then apply it into my life. But if we just do it as thus is the Lord, we are saying you have no option. God is saying it, so just do it. 
okay now if a believer is mature exposed or uh, you know exposed to the word of god they will understand that it's okay for me to seek a confirmation but uh, if the believer is very new then sometimes they have been misguided a lot of believers have been misguided because they said oh that says the lord you go to that city okay i'm packing my bags and i'm going so major life decisions get made especially by new believers and it can you know it it may work detrimentally uh, and um, may work ac- against them actually so we are defeating the purpose so that is the danger of uh, emphasizing it as thus says the lord so it's okay let people be able to question what we are saying uh, and so always say i sense i feel uh, uh, uh you know i submit this to you think about it pray about it or uh, uh, it, it, does this bear a bit witness in your spirit so you can put it in all these ways uh, the word that god is giving us okay right uh, all right so a uh, preparation for releasing prophecy so we'll move on to that so let me just pause here anything to talk about uh, think about yes yes if you are yeah thank you ma'am uh, i just wanted to know like uh, uh when is a person labeled as a, you know false prophet is it when um, if at all uh, you know what they prophesy doesn't come to pass or uh, you know what why uh, would a person be labeled as a false prophet what are the reasons estevia uh a really good question there uh we will talk about this uh, a little ahead in our uh, course a false prophet is not necessarily someone who may say a wrong prophecy or two okay uh why are we saying that because see when it comes to a teacher of god's word uh i personally have changed my stance on you know a, a few minor things here and there uh, as i learned more about the word of god later on but when i knew that you know whatever i knew uh, i would teach it to uh, you know my college friends and all and say hey this is how it is you know worship must be done only like this or prayer must be done only like this but as i learned more in the lord uh, i knew hey that's not correct what i was saying was little knowledge uh, so i i became more accurate in my understanding of whether it is worship or thing and then when i'm teaching those those uh, truths uh, it it's more accurate so i'm just giving an example divya so like that there are many teachers of god's word uh, who you know at the highest level i am just giving a very small example at my level but great teachers of god's word who have shifted their position regarding certain matters but we don't call them false teachers do we we just know that you know they they learn better to function in that grace that god gave them so similarly people are called into the office of the prophet now can they make mistakes a couple of times sometimes actually they can it doesn't make them a false prophet when would we say that somebody is a false prophet when they are not called uh, as you know uh, into that office of a prophet and they say many things which are contrary to god's word obviously and you know we know that in the last days apostle uh, uh, john warns us uh, about such things apostle peter warns us about you know people who will come with false doctrines and false teachings so there are people who very clearly fall into that category because what they are saying is contrary to god's word so they would be the false prophets the actual false prophets uh, and remember we we said about uh, prophets in deuteronomy 13 my god said that if there is a prophet among you uh, you know uh, if he says let us go and worship other gods he may be accurate in what he is prophesying but ultimately if those prophecies lead you away from god it's another spirit which is operating okay apostle john warned us about this and he said discern every spirit so it depends on the spirit divya with which they are functioning so a false prophecy or two doesn't make a prophet a false prophet okay okay it's just like telling uh 
uh, like the spirit of antichrist right that yeah the, something like that something yeah, like that who will not acknowledge that jesus christ is the son of god and uh, going against you know the exactly. biblical truths okay exactly okay. that is a false prophet okay thank you thank you ma'am yes thank you all right i just noticed our time is up uh, so let's uh, stop here for now and uh, let's continue in the next class i request somebody to please go ahead and pray as we close off shall i pray yes sir yeah please thank you father thank you lord for helping us learn these uh, truths apa we thank you lord for pastor nancy thank you for um, giving her the grace to wisdom the strength to teach us uh, uh, these truths uh, father we pray lord that um, as we are learning these uh, let it uh, let us not forget about these uh, but uh, help us uh, practice them father let us desire uh, for these gifts to operate in us father you have you no respecter of people father you are a god who graciously gives us these gifts lord may we be wise enough lord to um, desire for these gifts father and uh, we pray father whatever um, Uh, Lord, offices of the ministry that you have called us into. Lord, we pray that you help us identify and um, uh, be uh, glorifying your name through all this. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' precious name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Div Divya, and thank you, everybody. Uh, please desire and flow in the gift of prophecy. Have a blessed week ahead. We'll connect next week. Thank Bye. You, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now.